Hello, everyone. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and uh, we begin the morning uh, with, of course, Major Hurricane Matthew, and we've got warnings up for Jamaica, uh, Haiti, uh, eastern Cuba, both on the north coast and the south coast, and also for the southeastern Bahamas. And, and during the night, uh, we've seen uh, Matthew hold his own pretty well as uh, you can just pick out the eye on this wider view, and it's also now on that course toward the north, albeit slowly, but it's creeping north right along 75 degrees west. Just want to point out a couple of things here. We have a, a few things happening. Uh, first off, of course, you've got the uh, deep trough that has uh, created that weakness that we've been talking about, and, and Matthew continues to move uh, pretty much into this. Um, it, it wobbled a little bit, got went stationary, and this would be uh, something along the lines of what the foretra forecast track is going to be over the next two to three days as it uh, gets very close to the coast of uh, Haiti. It is going to pass well east of Jamaica, and, and that uh, at least spares uh, Jamaica the worst of it, although they will get into some rain. Haiti, on the other hand, uh, is going to have a much more difficult time, particularly because they're on the east side, so there's going to be tremendous tropical inflow uh, coming up uh, from the south and southeast, and that's going to prolong rains there for days, uh, particularly because this is going to be slow moving, and wouldn't be surprised to see 20 inch plus rain amounts uh, in some of the mountain areas. The other thing that's going on, and I'm gonna we're gonna watch this. There's um, a disturbance north and east of Matthew, northeast of the Leewards, right here, that uh, actually looks like it's gotten a little better organized. And uh, we had a situation last year with uh, Joaquin if you remember in the Bahamas where Tropical Storm Ida uh, reformed to its northeast and ultimately it had an impact on the track. Now, I'm not sure how this is all going to play out. The systems are very close uh, and oftentimes the circulation of the stronger one will absorb the weaker one. But right now, in terms of where the inflow is, um, this inflow coming into Matthew is to the south, whereas you have uh, this weather system is still well to the northeast, so for the time being, it's kind of contained in its own little world. You can see a lot of dry air here uh, to the north and east of that, this particular weather system. So we're going to watch that to see how that uh, ultimately plays out. Now, here's the uh, tighter view of the water vapor, and you can see the eye right there, very well defined, kind of straddling right along 75 uh, top winds, uh, uh, 130 miles an hour, even though the pressure's actually not changed very much. The wind field has uh, changed just a little bit in terms of its intensity. Uh, and actually, when you look at past storms, 130 miles an hour matches a 943 millibar pressure a lot better than 160 mile an hour winds. But, you know, the wind criteria now is what drives uh, where a storm uh, is in terms of its uh, categorical strength. Uh, used to be wind and pressure together, and you'd have to be under 925 millibars in order to get a Category 5 hurricane plus the wind criteria. Now it's just the pressure. So uh, let's check and see what models are doing with this. And, uh, you know, I kind of think that at this point, you know, I started to favor the idea of an offshore, an offshore solution. So now the question is going to be how uh, far offshore this is going to be, and we're going to take a look. I want to get a little tighter first so we can get the uh, view as it moves across uh, the islands. And you can see it here. And we go. And let's we'll back it up just a little bit. Actually, I can probably zoom. It might be a little better. Let's see if we can try a zoom here. And yeah, I think that works. Okay, good. So here we go. Here's uh, Matthew straddling along 75. This is the GFS model. It touches uh, Haiti, uh, then also touches the east coast of Cuba, and then comes out in the southeastern Bahamas, uh, moves on a kind of wobbly course, uh, generally northwestward, uh, to off the Florida coast. This track would have minimal impact for Florida, just so we uh, were clear on this, uh, for eastern Florida, and that it continues northward from there, uh, getting pretty close on the GFS to the Carolinas, to the North Carolina coastline, before it starts to veer to the northeast. Now, one of the things that I'm picking up on in terms of this offshore track is whether this could eventually transition into a um, 
winter, uh, a, a non-tropical storm or a post-tropical storm, and I think that may very well be the case, albeit an intense one. Now, the last two runs of the GFS take it out northeastward, well offshore, but it does want to seem to enhance precip on the northern end. Uh, this would not be a, this would not at all be a serious problem for the New Jersey, New York uh, City, Hudson Valley, Long Island, and Connecticut area. If anything, uh, it might be beneficial because of the fact that it does produce a decent amount of rain, which is something we sorely need be given the drought situation. But it is an offshore track, uh, northeast off North Carolina. And one of the things that's happening um, in terms of the upper air, and we'll go to that now, and you'll see it here. Uh, it, it's it's the same idea. Uh, we've got the trough approaching and the question of whether uh, it phases. And on the GFS, uh, here's your here's your trough. There's Matthew, and uh, the flow here is south-southwest. This is lifting up, trying to lift up northeastward. The upper feature is, but what happens is um, it <clears throat> this kind of just moves along in a progressive fashion and it really doesn't phase with Matthew on this on this run until it's out here okay so it's already uh, well to the north and east the Europeans got a slightly different view of the situation and we are going to take a look at the European now and uh, see where and you'll see where this goes and here we have it as it moves more eastward on the European. And the reason why is, again, uh, having to do with that western trough. The western trough is not nearly as amplified as it is on the GFS. So instead of picking it up, the system winds up moving out to the east. Now, a little bit of an odd scenario happens on the GFS where that northern trough, you can see it here, and this is down the road, that northern trough is right there and it's moving eastward, it actually leaves Matthew behind. It doesn't pick it up on this uh, particular model run. So Matthew uh, winds up, on the European at least, uh, moving out and actually moving south south eastward. believe it or not. Uh, this is toward uh, the end of next week. And I, I don't even know what to make of that because in the end when they're um, – the, with the westerlies the way they are, if the European is right, this could eventually wind up getting kicked out to the northeast anyway. But um, the, the bottom line is that its solution is further southeast, so we would never really get involved with this uh, because of the fact that the system in the north on the European is just not as deep. And you can see it there. Instead of having a phase, the European just keeps things rather progressive. So. I, I think we, we're pretty much lined up in terms of figuring out how this is all going to play uh, over the next several days. Um, it goes, it's going to boil down to that trough in the north. Uh, I think um, the, uh, the odds are increasingly uh, appearing as if the track, is, the, tra the track is definitely going to be offshore, I believe. And uh, it, it's going to take um, the worst of the hurricane out in the ocean. Uh, there are questions on whether we're going to get maybe a transition over into some sort of non-tropical system where it starts to behave more like a winter-type storm when it gets up here in the sense that uh, the rain and the, the strong, the heaviest rains and the strongest winds shift over to um, the western side and we get it, it acts like a wintertime nor'easter. And in, in reality, it would be a plus uh, from the standpoint of rain because of the drought. I don't want to rule anything out because models have been uh, changing. Well, as we seem to have at least zeroed in on this um, <clears throat> this pat this idea that um, it, it's going whether it's still going to phase or not phase. So don't forget to check in on the latest posts on meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, ssstormchasers.com, and on my new website which just launched uh, yesterday. Uh, which is nycweathernow.com. And also download my weather app if you like uh, for the New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Eastern Pennsylvania area. And you can subscribe to my forecast. It's just 99 cents a month. And that just that's just to help uh, pay for the costs of everything. And you get an ad, a virtually advertiser-free experience on the app. So have a great day.